She's a runner with 1,000 kilometers under her belt in 2021 and has read the entire Harry Potter series in three languages, twice, but still got time for unveiling and mitigating malicious threat actors and operations. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Checkpoint's VP of Research, Maya Horovitz. You're a wizard, Harry, says Rubius Hagrid as he welcomes Harry Potter into the world of magic, giving him a wand and an owl to get by. Getting into hacking is a bit easier, only requiring, well, a keyboard. Each Harry Potter book is constructed out of similar building blocks. It's summertime, and Harry is staying at his aunt and uncle's house in the non-magical muggle world. He's then led into the wizarding world, takes out money from Gringotts Bank, and goes shopping in Diagon Alley, hops on the Hogwarts Express train to get to school, learns some magical stuff, takes part in the school's sport tournament called Quidditch, then the villain Voldemort appear, they fight, Harry wins, all is well. Let's use these plot points to highlight some of the most magical cyber attacks revealed by Checkpoint Research in 2021. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of 4 Privet Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. We start off in the non-magical world, where regular people live unaware of the existence of the wizarding world. But the Dursleys, Harry Potter's aunt and uncle, knew all about magic, as Mrs. Dursley's sister was a witch. So they knew what magic was, even knew that it could kill. And yet, they chose to ignore it and hoped that looking the other way would make it disappear. But here's the thing. If you ignore it, if you don't learn about it, you won't be able to protect against it. We all have these friends and relatives who, although having family members working in the cybersecurity business, just ignore the existence of cyber attacks. They open every email, click every link, fill in their credit card number in every form, so you can feel free to tell them some of the stories I'll be sharing and help them avoid being Dursleys. A gigantic dragon was tethered to the ground in front of them, barring access to four or five of the deepest vaults in the place. We usually think of magic as the fast and easy way to get the job done. But when stealing money or swords out of a bank account, it looks like the muggle, non-magical way is surprisingly easier. Harry and his friends had to mix a potion that makes you look like another person, steal a wand, cast a curse that makes another person do as you tell them, face a terrifying dragon and more. But some mobile malware only require the victim to click allow, and the money is transferred from their bank account to the attackers. We found the following mobile app in Google Play under the name Peg Cashback after a Brazilian banking service. Like many novel banking Trojans, it abuses Android's accessibility services built to assist users with disabilities in using Android devices and apps by providing alternative interfaces to interact with the device. However, when a victim is lured by malware into enabling this service, it turns into a weapon, granting the application ability to access anything a regular user can access and perform any action a user can do on an Android device through an API, meaning that the user will not necessarily know what the attacker is doing. So here's how it works. The victim downloads the app from Google Play. They then open the app and click Approve, as we always do, in this case, activating accessibility services. A message then pops asking to open the bank's app, the real bank, that is, not the malicious one. The user opens the app and types in their credentials. Then, the malware exploits the accessibility services to click the icon that makes the app retrieve the balance in the victim's bank account. Again, using the accessibility services, the malware fetches that number and saves it as a variable called value in the memory. The malware shows an overlay screen claiming the bank's app is syncing while actually just passing some time to let the malware transfer the funds. During this time, the malware uses the accessibility services to search for a button called transfer. It clicks it, then enters the value variable, which holds the account balance, meaning that it's about to empty the victim's account entirely. As the receiver of the money, it enters the attacker's hard-coded Brazilian ID number. And that's it. All the victim's money has been transferred to the attacker. The beauty of this technique is that it allows the malware to be a very small application, not doing many suspicious activities, not even communicating with the CNC, thus flying under the radar. Well, the virus total radar with zero hits, but not our radar. 
Obviously. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me where I might find platform nine and three quarters? Harry's confusion when getting to the train station looking for the right platform to board the Hogwarts Express is no different from the confusion of Iranian citizens when getting to the train station this last July seeing this sign. Long delays due to cyber attacks. More information, 64411, this number being the telephone number of Iran's Supreme Leader's office. Checkpoint research were the ones to solve this mystery and identify the threat actors behind this attack. To recap the story, on July, a wiper was installed on Iran's railway and the Ministry of Roads and Urbanization, effectively wiping all machines and preventing access to them. One of the coolest things about this wiper, in my opinion, is that it actually skipped some very specific machines, those in charge of displaying information on screens in the train stations. This way, they could show the aforementioned messages and create confusion and panic in the crowd. Less than a week later, the tools used in this attack were analyzed by Iranian security company Amen Pardaz. Checkpoint research went over the report and started hunting for similar tools used elsewhere. And indeed, we were able to find a few similar samples uploaded to VirusTotal from Syria throughout 2020. The configurations of the Syrian samples had the names of the companies they were targeting, Katergi Group and its related company Arfada Petroleum. Both companies are located in Syria, but are said to be involved in the Iranian regime's oil smuggling network. So, who is behind these attacks? Looking at the Syrian samples, we found the string Indra, which is the Hindu god of war. We then found the images left by the attackers on the screens of their Syrian victims, and they too mentioned Indra. And as it turns out, a hacking group called Indra has social media accounts where it claims responsibility for several cyber attacks against Syrian companies supporting the Iranian Quds forces, involved in money transfers, petrol smuggling and airways, some under US Treasury sanctions. The conclusion is that the Indra group, who attacked Syrian targets helping Iran spread the revolution, now also attacked Iranian critical infrastructure, encouraging Iranian citizens to blame the government. Several things are in common between the attacks in Syria and in Iran. All are directed against Iranian-related targets, all use similar wiper tools, and none of them tries to be stealthy, but rather leave their mark. So who is Indra? We can't really know for sure. It could be a cover for a nation-state group, but it could also very well be an Iranian opposition group operating from within. And out fell a book. Harry just had time to register its handsome green cover, emblazoned with the golden title The Monster Book of Monsters, before it snapped shot on his hand and then flapped past him, still scuttling on its covers. It's not only magical books that may attack you, it's also real books, malicious e-books crafted by threat actors. Checkpoint Research found a vulnerability that could allow crafting an e-book that, when opened, would take over Kindle devices. Kindle can process different book formats, and our research focused on how it processes one of the most common formats, PDF. To take over a device, all a hacker needed to do was make sure their target user opens a malicious ebook, which could have been uploaded to the Kindle store or sent directly to them. Then, it's game over. The attackers have access to private information, but more importantly, to Amazon credentials that can be used elsewhere and to banking information. The Kindle could also have been an entry point to the user's local network. If you think about it, attacking through a book allows to choose your targets. Their region, religion, language. Just weaponize a book your targets may want to read. For example, if you're targeting cyber researchers, you can weaponize practical malware analysis. If your targets are third-year wizarding students, you may want to weaponize the monster book of monsters. We reported this vulnerability to Amazon, and they fixed it soon after. The chasers throw the quaffle and put it through the hoops to score, Harry cited. So that's sort of like basketball on broomsticks with six hoops, isn't it? What's basketball? said Wood curiously. School isn't all about studying. It's also about playing and having fun. In Hogwarts, the team's sport is Quidditch. Both teams fly on their brooms, earn 10 points for scoring a goal, and 150 points for catching the golden snitch, a tiny ball that flies at very high speed. For threat actors, the most fashionable sport of the last few years is ransomware. 
You earn hundreds of dollars for encrypting an individual's PC and up to millions of dollars for also leaking data and threatening to publish it. When CryptoLocker emerged in 2013, ransom demands were typically $300. The number kept growing, and in 2019, hackers already asked for $15 million, and this number keeps doubling by the year. The state of the art is using what Checkpoint Research coined as double or triple extortion. It's not only that machines are encrypted, but also data is leaked, and if the victim refuses to pay, attackers will publish their PII, customer data, financial data, source code, and in some rare but sophisticated cases, attackers also reach out directly to the victim's customers, asking them for a ransom or their personal records will be published. From 2019 to 2021, the monthly percent of organizations attacked with ransomware almost tripled. At the moment, one out of every 17 organizations is impacted by ransomware each month. How come? Well, clearly, now that the prize is so appealing, it's more lucrative to try and seize it by attacking as many organizations as possible, which is why ransomware operators have turned to widely spread botnets, such as TrickBot or Emotet, as part of their infection chain. Both botnets were taken down recently, but have bounced back to the checkpoint research list of top 10 most prevalent malware families. So data exfiltration is the X factor or the golden snitch of ransomware attacks, allowing the growth from hundreds to millions of dollars in ransom per victim. Avada Kedavra, Expelliarmus. The bang was like a cannon blast, and the golden flames that erupted between them at the dead center of the circle where they had been treading marked the point where the spells collided. Harry saw Voldemort's green jet meet his own spell. Voldemort was dead killed by his own rebounding curse, and Harry stood with two wands in his hand, staring down at his enemy's shell. In their final battle, Voldemort casts the killing curse at Harry, who spun it back at he who must not be named. In other words, Voldemort's curse eventually served as a double-edged sword. Here is a case where one cyber threat actor used an attack targeting their network and shot it back at their cyber rival. We actually named this attack Jian, a Chinese double-edged sword. Our story begins in 2016, when a group called Shadow Brokers started publishing attack tools allegedly developed by Equation Group, widely believed to be the NSA. Some of their exploits were for zero days, previously unknown vulnerabilities. A few months later, Microsoft patched a privilege escalation vulnerability in Windows, referred to as CVE-2017-0005. This vulnerability was reported by U.S. defense contractor Lockheed Martin, the biggest military-industrial corporation globally. We can cautiously assume they found it through an exploit targeting them or one of their clients. But anyway, the exploit in the wild was attributed to Chinese group APT31. In the last couple of years, Checkpoint Research has been developing a novel method to fingerprint exploit writers, clustering different tools developed by the same hacker. We are doing an analysis of exploits written by Chinese APT31, trying to find previously unaffiliated tools. And then, something weird happened. In a cluster of tools that included the one reported by Lockheed Martin, there was one tool which didn't seem to fit. An exploit leaked from the equation group by the shadow brokers. So who's the author? Equation group or APT31? Let's see it on a timeline. The Chinese exploit was disclosed in 2017. You can say it was built based on the data leaked by the shadow brokers, who had surfaced a few months earlier. But the timestamp on the Chinese tools is from 2014. So why not say these are Chinese tools found in the Equation Group repository? Because the Equation Group tools actually date back to 2013. So it looks like the tools were built by the Equation Group, then used by IPT31, then publicly leaked, and only then disclosed by Lockheed Martin and patched by Microsoft. How can it be? We can speculate that the Chinese caught the tool when it was used by the Equation Group against them or against a mutual target, or that the Chinese attacked the Equation Group and stole it directly from their repositories. Either way, it seems like a Chinese group is using a potentially American tool possibly against American targets, just like a double-edged sword. We've all got both light and dark inside us. What matters is the part we choose to act on. That's who we really are. Threat actors and security researchers both have cyber skills, 
And at Checkpoint Research, we choose light over dark, white hat over black hat, protect over attack, always. I'll end by saying that the Harry Potter movies are beautiful and magical, but the books have so many details the two and a half hour movies just can't cover. Same goes for this presentation, which only gave the essence of our work. So go read the Harry Potter books and register to Checkpoint Research blog to get the detailed research papers. I know you will enjoy both. Thank you. Yes.